Excellent. Hey, I've checked out uh, your short film. What is it? Uh, the the Lapo is fine. Yeah. Hey, so uh, so tell me how proud of it that you are that it's being showcased at the Amer American Black Film Festival. Oh, we're, we're completely honored and humbled. I mean, this is one of those experiences where we made this in a little village just outside of London in a, a county called Sussex. Um, and we just knew why we wanted to tell this story. We knew what it meant to us. This was for us a really British story. So for a film that you've made on a small budget with a really dedicated crew to translate to an American audience, you just sort of realize that the more specific you are with an idea, the more universal it can feel. So it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing journey that it's been so far and we are completely honored about the ABFF Festival. So where, where did the original idea came from for Dilapal is Fine? So Dilapal is Fine, it started with, um, I am an actress, I play Daisy in the film and the, my co-writer is a novelist, her name is Chibundu Anuzo. And she wrote a short story called Sunita, probably about five years ago. And I was asked to read it for BBC Radio 3 over here. And we've been collaborating back and forth and working on lots of different ideas. And I just kept coming back to this short story and saying, actually, there are some elements of this that could really work for a short film. And there's something about Jerudu's writing that requires a larger audience. It's incredibly filmic in the way that she, she expresses herself. Um, and so then we got together and we put together a short film of this, of this story. We made it Dolapo is Fine because there were, there were some of our own experiences, of course, that were coming into it as well. And we knew that we wanted this young black woman to be front and center of this story. I'm, I'm actually um, quite amazed that uh, you, you somehow presented an issue of systematic institutional racism in, a, in its own way, but you weren't like in your face with, 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 it, with it. It actually, you made your point across without sort of like screaming at the audience about, about it. Could you talk about that? I, I enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. No, that was, that was a, big, a big part of what we wanted to do as well. I mean, you want to make a film that is accessible. Um, and also in the film, you can see that there are so many microaggressions that go on in Dol Apple's experience that some people would usually uh, miss or feel like it was one too many issues that were being hammered at them. But I think what we managed to do here was the tone for us was important. The tone for this film is ultimately celebratory, which you can sort of feel, which is infused with the music and the energy and the performance that Doyen does as Dolapo. So we knew that the overriding tone, if we achieve that, then people would be more likely to listen to those microaggressions, those systemic racism that goes on within these institutions where somebody can often be the only person of color in that environment. Now, talk about the development of Daisy, who you actually played, because, uh, because this short film could have been entirely different if Daisy was a white woman or a white man, because then, then, then it would r really show racism. But you, you basically played Daisy, and um, it basically almost lessened the effect of, uh, you know, the institutionalized, um, how would you say, biasness towards hair and, and names. Could you talk about uh, making it as a black character? Yeah, of course. One of the things that we wanted to talk about with this film was uh, the sort of intergenerational complexities that exist for black women. So you have Dolapo, who's the young girl, our leading character. You then have Daisy, um, who is, you know, the person that Dolapo aspires to be. But she has been in an environment that has been even more white and she has been the only figure in that environment. So when she talks about assimilation, it's because there was no other way for her to exist and achieve. And then on top of that, you have the mum, you have Dolapo's mum as well, who sort of feels like, you know, what is presentable is in many ways a European hairstyle. So we actually wanted to put in those layers of complexity because sometimes the aggressions and the confusion don't just come from one place. Hmm. And we wanted to actually sort of fill it with a cacophony of voices and, and people talking to her and asking her to sort of be a certain way. And ultimately, when she comes through that, it's all the more stronger. Tell me about the discovery of the uh, young actors to play Dilapo. 
Oh, she's great. Her name is Doyin Ajiboye. Um, she's 19. She was at least 19 when we started, uh, when we started shooting. Um, she has the most, I mean, she was born to be on set. She's so natural, so professional. Even things that were new, she sort of gave every single department um, their time, asked them what they needed, uh, and, and still maintained her own performance because it is the find of Doyen, I think, that makes this piece what it is. Um, she, she started, she's doing quite a lot. She's, she does something called Identity School of Acting over here in the UK, uh, which is set up by Femi Oguns and it has alumni like John Boyega and Letitia Wright. She's a part of that world. She's also a part of the National Youth Theatre. But we knew we just wanted a fresh voice and a fresh energy that completely understands the story that we are trying to tell and Doyen did that entirely. I'm, I'm also assuming that uh, you are more progressive and you're very open where w women should display any type of hair and adopt any type of names that they actually want. Am I correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because what we're talking about here is uh, the sort of the, the tension between assimilation and self-expression, right? And we're just constantly pushing ourselves towards what it is to, to, to have our self-expression. If for Daisy, she genuinely enjoys wearing that wig, then who are we to say? That is, that is what makes her happy. That is her armor for the world. And she looks absolutely fabulous while she's doing it. Um, but that, but that, is, that is the message of the piece. It's kind of saying that however we can get, wouldn't it be great if we could get to that place of self-acceptance and self-love far sooner. And the fact that in this story, you have a young girl doing it at the age of what, 16 or 17, it sort of gives everybody hopefully watching it, the confidence to believe that they can express themselves however they choose as well. Excellent. Well, let, let me uh, start to wrap things up because I, I know you're a very fairly busy woman and I took a lot of your time or, already. How, what, how do you, it's a silly question to ask because of times like this, but how are you staying creative and um, how are you trying to bring in more projects for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one of those times, I mean, lockdown um, allows you, I guess, the positive of it allows you to ask yourself what matters and, and why we do what we do. So for me, it has all been about generating uh, new projects. So I have a, quite a series of projects that I'm writing. Um, some are in the, my two things for our production company are hope and humour. So looking at these hopeful figures, often with a black female lens, and also comedy, because in times like this, we all need to laugh. So for me, it's about understanding more about the industry and how this progresses because this was our first film um, but also using this time to let the imagination do its thing and get I've got a few projects in development so that when we are fully out of this period um, we have some work to get started on. Excellent well hey Joan hey thank you for uh, speaking with me I love the tone of your uh, short story I think it it, it was very, very effective on bringing the message across um, to American audiences. And, and it's a great, and it's also a great bridge between the British and the Americans to find a commonality um, in, in the world like this. Thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. Hey, not a problem. Speak Thank to you. Care. Hopefully we get to do this again. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you so much, Kirk. Take care. Hey, you too, Joe. Bye-bye.